Okay, is the UFB going to become 24 hours? Yes, guys, welcome back to episode four of the Ultimate Fitness Podcast. Welcome back, guys. You're here with Faust again. We're back, baby. <laughs> I'm Simon Fan, your host. This is Joe. I'm also your host. I was there. Also the yeah, host. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a few weeks, hasn't it, since yeah. we've all got together. Yeah, we yeah. missed it. That's some catching up to do, I think. We have. We have. You've been busy with your own podcast. Yes, we've been overtaken with Camilla. It's been good. Yeah. When is it coming out? <laughs> <laughs> it's already out, isn't it? One's out. We've got two more in the bank. Yeah, we've got to do the thumbnails. I actually uh, finished editing the, the last one. So for you, those who haven't watched, check out Power Hour podcast with Camilla and Bausta. Can I get heated? And we had Duker on last week and myself, yeah. which was quite good. Yeah, we spoke yeah. a lot about, we touched upon on quite a few topics that we're not really touched upon again before, so... Yeah, so um, all the preference on me to like bloody edit all these podcasts. So uh, yeah, <laughs> shall <Fate> delegate. <laughs> yeah, I, do, I, I do actually quite enjoy editing stuff and just seeing how the final outcome comes. Yeah. It's uh, getting easier, isn't yeah, it? Because not not many people see the inside of this room, no. mm. and um, to see the final outcome takes a lot of work. Oh yeah, but I've got like a bit of a system in place where I can, I can probably do it within two hours at a whole podcast then you got to think about doing the titles and music and intro outro exporting it then publishing it then for it's, it's a lot there's a lot that goes into it yeah it's not just like yeah. you put it in and it's just done yeah it was that easy <laughs> um right got any questions any topics to talk about yeah. right should we go straight into it let's go straight into it joseph i know it's fresh the summer the, the sun's shining energy's high vitamin d everywhere yes we love it so I'm assuming this is coming out of the uh, recent controversy in the boxing world. Steroid use in professional sports. What are your thoughts? Just in bodybuilding or just uh, in any sport? Any any sport. I think bodybuilding is a given. So forget yeah. bodybuilding. The use of anabolic steroids and performance enhancing drugs in professional and competitive sports. Want me to go first? Yeah. I yeah. think when you're sort of competing at a very high level, steroids obviously do have a part. They do, you know, they do help. Mm-hmm. But when you're training and you're giving hundred percent in every aspect, steroids is it's all the next yeah. step that takes you to like from being good to being great. And I'm not saying it's gonna turn everyone into a champion, but it allows you to push your body further. Of course it does it helps your recovery, focus mm-hmm. obviously in bodybuilding terms, being of such a visual sport, it helps massively. I mean you, you only have to go to a natural competition and you have to go to the Mr. Olympia, you can see the yeah. disparity between physiques. Yeah, and even when you consider other sports, I think you can see when guys obviously want to push yeah. the sound for a little yeah. bit more. Even in basketball, you want to exert more power when you yeah. jump and stuff like that. So it would help, I think. And in bodybuilding, we all know it happens. And yep. it, it's part of we, bodybuilding, almost. We put, we put, I've, we've become desensitized to it. Yeah. So when we talk about tremble and test, it's like mm-hmm. taking amino acids. Yeah, honestly, I think a lot of people <laughs> think it's like a taboo topic, but to us, it's like yeah. almost an everyday no, discussion. Back, back, in, back in the day, it was because mm-hmm. not many people knew about it and it was, it was very hard to to access but now sort of it's quite another norm to take yeah. steroids I've actually watched Jesse's video the guy who came to visit West, the gym yeah. yeah and he did like this little interesting topic about steroid use in UK and he was very shocked about how yeah he went open, to a founder gym didn't he yeah and he was very shocked about how open, open people yeah, yeah. are yeah. about using steroids in UK because it's legal here yeah whereas in America people are a little bit more reserved and they don't just admit yeah. so that was interesting for me to see actually yeah I think People from UK, I mean, I'm, I think generally in general, they're, they're more open to talk about steroid use. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think in terms of, yeah, it is for, for sports and yeah, why not? I mean, if it's going to allow you to push your body to become the best that we can. Yeah, I yeah. think as long as you're educated about all the impacts and about yeah. all the side effects that come with it, do your thing. It's your yeah. body at the end of the day. If you know it's going to help you, if you're not abusing it just for the sake of taking it, just for the sake of, oh, if you can't be bothered to work out and then you take it, then there's an issue. But when when it comes to a competitive sport, obviously, steroid use is banned. Mm-hmm. It's against the rules, whether it's USADA or any drug testing federation, you will get, or institution, you'll mm-hmm. get a ban or you'll be, you know, you'll have a temporary removal from your sport or you yeah. lose your title or whatever it is. And 
They've got a banned substance list. If you use anything on that list, theoretically, and it comes up in the test, you will be banned or mm-hmm. fined or whatever it will be. What do you think there is an easy solution to that? Or Because in my opinion, at the highest level, you've got highly competitive, highly driven individuals yeah. who are willing to do whatever it takes to win. Mm-hmm. You know, And at the end of the day, it's not just their personal goals there. There's millions of pounds, millions, millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. There's a lot of money, someone's livelihood is at stake and the difference between winning and losing is massive at yeah. that point especially at that level I mean if you fuck up one game right yep. you can get cancelled what yep. you see the rest of the one game, game one fight yeah. or you look at the 100 metres like the, the, yeah, the Olympics yeah. as well it's like, yeah. it's like milliseconds yep. between like first and yeah. second yeah. You know? everyone there are everyone there is phenomenal yeah. yeah everybody they don't they don't make champions I think everyone has like a stop where you can Push your body too. Yes. Or they say if, if there was no steroids, the top 10 would, would still be the, the top, top 10. 10. Yeah. Maybe yeah. one person would yeah. be different. Because mm-hmm. these people that respond well to yeah. it. Do you yeah. think there should be a untested league? Or is it is in there? Is it something, like an yes. open league. Almost. There's something in the works. From a, Yes, but it's, it's going to be hard to see how, well, how much is allowed. I mean, yeah. if it's like, if they wedge the door the line. I think it's a good idea as long as it's regulated, yeah. like Simon says. Yeah, if if the federation that are putting together the event or... Yeah, but well, how are they going to regulate it? So you can only take 10,000 million, 5,000 million. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be very hard to regulate yeah. because you've got to think a lot of steroids now, they're the black market. Mm-hmm. So even like if someone's taking yeah. something, it might not be what it says on the tin. What if there's a list of the ones you can take and you can't take? Yeah, but... yeah. You, yeah, but the <laughs> yeah. but even say for instance, I go to my dealer and I buy yep. Tremblant or Anavar, yeah, yep. might not necessarily be that. So yeah. if, if yeah. it's on the banned list and you take something that isn't on yep. the banned list, mm-hmm. it, it might be on the banned list yep. because it's, yeah. it's something else. Yeah, yeah. it would be hard to very. A lot of the steroids now are compounds. You can't you're not meant for human consumption, so no. you can't just buy them. Even if I'm a pharmacist. And I think it is an issue, the fact that it is illegal to sell, but legal yep. to buy. Yep. So you can never really know what you're getting your hands on to. Possession is legal. Yeah. You know, distribution's not. Um, Which is very weird to me. It's very yeah. weird. You don't, you don't, the government don't make any money or nobody makes money from people taking things. They just make money from people buying. So the chicken yeah, and egg, to be honest, the chicken and the eggs, isn't it? If they get, end up getting sick and it just makes money for it. So government makes money for it anyway at the end of the day. So but I, I think it should be allowed. Um, yeah. Because... At that level, anyway, everyone, most people take yep. it, mm-hmm. whether they get found out or not. Most no, take it. I agree. I just think people, people are, don't always yeah. admit. People are sponsored. People are sponsored by businesses and companies that bring a ton of money and mm-hmm. publicity to that sport at the certain at one certain time. Yeah. Um, if one person may be using dabbling with something, and that they've invested a lot of money into that person, yeah. you know. With unless they if they keep everybody happy, all the higher ups, you know, they're really mm-hmm. probably not going to pull them about it. They do something wrong, they fuck up, they lose a yeah. fight, or they lose a match or a game, whatever. Maybe you'll come under scrutiny then because mm-hmm. you piss people off that have a big financial investment yeah. in you. My question is, if you've got an untested league and world records are being broken, mm-hmm. do you think more people would tune in to that to see the freak show, to see the circus, or would people so. tune in to watch? Oh. I think, think so. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, people yeah. like controversy. Yeah. People like things that are abnormal, yeah. right? And mm-hmm. pe- people like things that are taboo. Yeah. So I think people on steroids, the people, yeah. the, the bodies that really, really stand out. Yeah. I'm sorry, but they are the ones that are on steroids, and that's yeah. the. Well, like the Mr. Olympia is like the the pinnacle bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, it's pinnacle of steroids. It's the biggest. It's the biggest <laughs> bodybuilding show in the world. Yeah. It's, the, it's the, you know attracts the most audience. Mm-hmm. People pay to see the best. Yeah. Exactly. Like the unique people in the world. And exactly. Then, yeah. I mean, you go to like a normal, you know, local show, and it's. Yeah. That's yeah. a different show. And to be early, it takes sacrifice. It's yeah. one thing to get to the top, but to remain on the top and actually keep that position there, you would kind of have to take something because there's always going to be someone better than you. And back in the day when our bodybuilding was really popping in the UK, the super heavyweight class, which was always at the end, mm-hmm. yeah. obviously that's the, the biggest guys, the most muscle guys. Yeah. As soon as they could come on, and people would wait till the end of the night yeah. for mm-hmm. them to come on because they'd always be the last case. Mm-hmm. That would be like the, the main attraction, like yeah. watching the, the freaks are the biggest the, guys. The visual, uh, what you can yeah. see mm. is often what people associate steroid use with. Oh, it's yeah. not performance enhancement, it's which not. is exactly what they do. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just that when in a hypertrophic environment used in that way to maximize muscle growth, that's what bodybuilders use and yeah. allow them to recover faster so you can train again. However, no one ever talks about strength related sports and steroid use, really. 
Like powerlifting is strong. Powerlifting, yeah. the world's strong man's on the TV every single year. No. I, I, I've spoke to a few world's strongest men competitors. Hypothetically. Quite, 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 quite high up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he, I was quite having quite an open conversation about steroids and he was telling me how much mm -hmm. stuff he takes. And I thought, that's that's more than a lot of top bodybuilders yeah. I know. Yeah. And these, well, and these guys don't eat very, they don't eat healthy. No. They, they were smoking as well. He was smoking outside the gym when I was chatting to him. And uh, and for at least bodybuilders, they take more care of themselves yeah, yeah, they, with the diet and yeah. you know, everything else. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, but I think it does make right? sense. I do think it makes sense because if it does help with your resistance training yeah. and just the hypertrophy aspect yeah. of things, and that would definitely help them probably more than yeah. the bodybuilders. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because to them, it's not really about size, it's just about getting that extra, performance. extra push. Yeah. Performance. A lot of the strong men I see, they're just like a heart attack waiting to happen. Oh the God. human body is not meant to be 400 pounds. I don't no. care if you're when six I was foot at, 10. Yeah, six like sumo three. wrestlers as well. Yeah. They eat like 5,000 to 10,000 mm. calories a day. When, I, when I was at the, the, uh, the Arnold in Ohio, there was, you know, the stomp members, they were sitting yeah. behind me. Congratulations, by the way. He just won the World Strong Man again. Did they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they... they I mean, it, was a, it was a buffet breakfast and they kept on, I was, I was watching them there, they kept on walking up to the like, yeah. sort of plates like that, mountains, yeah. and obviously all the gear, and then they just looked like they were going to drop down dead. They didn't look healthy at all. They, 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 were, they are quite, yeah, like Tom's six or six ten. ten yeah. so, Tom's the big, one of the biggest human beings I've ever seen in my life. I feel like yeah. every time it comes to pushing your body to an yeah. extreme, you're just not going to be healthy. Yeah. You might look healthy. Yeah. People will think you're so healthy because yeah. you live so much and yeah. you look so good. But that's just not the case. The like, thing what, is though, right, I think people... What I do anyway, mm -hmm. tend to people would assume because a bodybuilder looks so freakish, they're lean, they're vascular, they're mm -hmm. veiny. That what a bodybuilder walks around looking like on well, stage condition mm -hmm. or close to it is so abnormal to what is the norm yeah. of yeah. a human being. People oh, yeah. relate that to I think steroids because it's been bastardized. I've Whereas you look at someone who's three hundred pounds, yeah. You know, That's holding some body fat. Mm. They're a big guy. Mm. They just look like a humongous mm. lumberjack mm -hmm. or farmer. And people are like, oh, yeah, whatever. But, but it's being in condition that makes people, yes. you know. Yeah. yeah. That's when yeah. they question it, right? Yeah. That's yeah. when they question it. Because it's so far away from mm. the norm. Yeah, and yeah. I know for a fact now a lot of more female, sorry, Simon, but a lot of women in bodybuilding. It's gone again. <laughs> I'm making them a coffee. question now, especially. Uh, yeah. Because I watched the bodybuilding shows from older days, basically. Yep. And when you're talking old today, how? 80s, 90s. 2017. 20, 25 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Golden era. Yeah. yeah. And the females on bodybuilding were actually a lot smaller yeah, yeah, well. beca because the females weren't really pushing steroids yeah. as much. Yeah. And even the bikini girls, which is like the smallest yeah. body on yeah, stage. There were any bikini so. compared until 2010. Yeah. yeah. The first. And what even they, they started very small. Yeah. What was Miss International? What do you mean? The competition. What Miss International. The class, technically. Um, it was women's bodybuilding was it? yeah yeah yeah, and it just was nowhere near as big no. as we women get now no. and no. even like the same bikini category now no. we, we're not much bigger we are a lot more defined and we're a lot more muscular more developed. Used to be. Yeah, yeah definitely yeah. Well, so every, every sport has to progress and develop yeah and so I do think that's a good there's more thing. competitors now way yeah. more yeah. as like trained bikini class as well which yeah. is just yeah. one up from yeah. bikini I think that's so cool yeah and next <laughs> mm -hmm. cool right Straight in again. Straight in. It's the calm before the storm. Oh, I'm waiting for the storm. So. Is a relationship better or worse if you're both bodybuilders or both competing? I can speak from a perspective of dating yeah. and not a bodybuilder. Yeah. I like my relationship because I get to go home and talk something, outside. S something yeah. outside of gym, which I think is healthy. Because you yeah. can't always have your mind fixated on one thing, although it's very good for your career and your path. I understand that. Don't forget, you talk about training with all your colleagues and yeah. friends at the gym. Yeah, and I work at the gym. I train at the gym and yeah. I'm training myself too for competition. So I'm here all the time, seven days a week. So when I go home, I want a little bit of different topics, I think. Yeah. Just a little bit more opening. I, I agree with you because um, I've, I've been out of partners before who have competed and um it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. I think I mean one person, especially if you're both dieting at the same time. Yeah. One person is like, but having two, you sort of clash a lot. Yeah. Like you're both like, you know, moody, you're both tired mm -hmm. and you, know, you both want to share the kitchen and little things you start, she's like, obviously my wife, she's not into the gym and um, the real thing, we never talk about bodybuilding. 
And it's nice, it's just, right? It's yeah, refreshing yeah, sometimes. Quite, it's, it's quite funny sometimes when I'll talk about mm-hmm. like Jake or little Kai Green and that, and she'll have no idea. I mean, she knows him now because I've introduced him, but before she had no, yeah. no idea who was who. Yeah, same as my boyfriend. I could mention a couple of names and he listens. Yeah, he yeah. listens because yeah. he's interested in what I have to say. Yeah. But does he care about it? Probably not really. <laughs> so I remember when I first met Kirsty, my wife, and um, I told her uh, I'd win Mr. Burm. <laughs> yeah, but she thought it was like a pageant thing. <laughs> So, well, you're not good looking enough to win this <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. She is like Calvin Klein type of. <laughs> she was involved in that sort of um, that kind of that beauty pageant yeah. um, scene. So she thought it was the sort of same sort of thing. But I think it's healthy not to have too many sort of. Um, we're actually the total opposites. Yeah, but I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think opposites work, work sometimes, yeah. as long as there's no clashing like that. Yeah, like I've, got, I've got zero interest what she does. <laughs> My boyfriend does artificial intelligence yeah. and data science. I can't sit down behind. We talked computer. about that last week, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. I can't just sit down and do. I first talked about makeup and programming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for me, it's just I understand. It. I did computer science at uni A level, yeah. but. I wasn't interested like in it. No. It's not something you, you like in your own time to start reading. No, 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 no of no. course not. Shredded glue, sir. Cool. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what, what do you think, Joe? Uh, well, in my past relationships, everyone's been physically active. Yeah. They've cared about health and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But they're not, they don't have the same competitive mindset no. towards bodybuilding or the gym. I think oh, you're yeah. surrounded. I'm, mm-hmm. I am consumed by it at this point. By yeah. choice. Yeah. You know, and not only do I have to think about my own training my own stuff now you know i'm taking on other people's pretty much i'm carrying the burden now from for mm-hmm. clients that want to compete yourself included yeah you know two other people and it's been picking up for you now right yeah yeah good but it's just i'm consumed by it by mm-hmm. choice because i'm choosing to do this and it's a fucking privilege that i get to do this and that's why if you guys want to compete you go to joseph <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. if you enjoy doing it well, then yeah i enjoy what i'm doing and i'm happy to be consumed by it at this point yes yeah. um it's I your think, focus. You're still yeah, young yeah, anyway. Yeah. So how I old are you? 24 this year. There you go. I think when it comes to relationship, dynamic can work, whatever it is, you know, and if someone wants to be consumed by it and their partner is mm-hmm. pushing them on, they're doing the same thing. Exactly. It works for them. It works for them. Exactly. But I think, you know, I've had it in the past where we're two highly driven people. Mm-hmm. You do clash a lot. If you can mm-hmm. deal with the clashes, great. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, whatever works, works. But I think, being consumed by one thing if I was to go home and you know if I was in a relationship or whatnot and my partner was just talking about the same shit I'd Mm -hmm. probably get very fucking frustrated very fast because I do tend I can snap I'm very chill (laughs) until I'm not very chill and um, but yeah I think you know having different interests Mm -hmm. is good because I'm I'm a very creative person as well so I enjoy art I enjoy nature I enjoy you know going for walks I enjoy movies and stuff like that um, I think it's just healthy for you to just be taken out yeah, of mindset off, sometimes. Just right? fucking switch off. And I want to switch off. There's yeah. something that we talked about before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all find it hard to do. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes it can yeah. can be too much then you end up yeah. sort of resenting. Sw- yeah. 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 So I, yeah. I go through phases where I watch podcasts have to yeah. talk about bodybuilding then all of a sudden one day I'll just stop and I'll yeah. go on something else because you, you need to get bored of hearing the yeah. same yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you do. You know yeah. what I mean? You do. And there's so many conversations about bodybuilding you can have with your partner and that's the only thing you guys are interested in both yeah. doing and yeah. those conversations well, now, are going to run out very if fast. If I like to watch something it's, it's, it's something that I can learn from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If I want to watch a podcast I mean I've watched the other probably they're a bit more fun but yeah. I'll watch probably if, if I can learn from it you yeah. know, if, if it's business yeah. you know, camera stuff mm-hmm. anything, camera anything yeah, exactly like that, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. even like self-development like yeah. anything because I think we all even even though we're all different ages, different stages of life, yeah. different stages of career, business, whatever it is, all still want to grow as individuals. Yeah. And the person that you're with should supplement that. Not 100%. You know, they shouldn't be. I couldn't go over Dossa. No. 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 Okay. They, they should. Uh, yeah, I find drive and passion very attractive mm-hmm. in, in individuals. Of course. And, you know, I've been a lazy bastard before. Like, I'm not fucking perfect. I think perfect. everyone had a stage you know, where they... I, I've never. <laughs> so you've been, you've been convinced since I can't imagine you having that stage. I know I had that stage. That stage lasted. Maybe when I was one years old, I was lazy for like, just six months of my life. I'm two years old. He's two years old. I was, old. I was never doing the gym when I was yeah. six months. <laughs> but no, I think, um, you know, I've been there where, you know, you just don't... It wasn't but that was lazy. I just didn't know what I, I wanted mm-hmm. to do. I didn't have enough self-confidence. It's directly in what I wanted to do and making it a reality because at the time it's a, it seemed so fucking far away yeah. from what I was able to do 
I was just waiting and waiting and shit happens and you're just like, oh, fuck it. I've got nothing to do. You always wait for the right moment. Yeah, there is no fucking right moment. You just make it happen. If you want it, you can make it happen. Whether it's business, relationships, life, fucking anything. I think you should always invest in the things that make you happy. Stop just going to work just because you want to work and you want the money. Actually invest in things that make you happy. You might be broke for a while, but that that will be worth it in the long run. Because if you love what you do, you're going to be good at it eventually. Just take time and don't be stew. Just don't have, be too don't rush take the time away from the busyness as well mm-hmm. which is something I'm consciously making a decision to try and do like I'm, a, I'm going away in a couple of weeks yeah. mm-hmm. that's one thing I did tell about you too I mean, it is very important to sort of have, a, have that break that mental yeah. break from the gym yeah. that's yeah. why obviously Wednesdays I try not to come in at all yeah. mm-hmm. unless I'm filming my podcast <laughs> but it does you know what I, so I had, to, had yesterday totally off the gym yeah. Yeah. and came into that I was raring to go I thought you know I can't wait mm-hmm. to come in do the podcast and, like, yeah. can, you, can you imagine having to train seven days a week 365 days a year I'd, I'd hate it you'd fucking hate it right? I did that for the first two years and you'll burn out and you'll end up Oh, I was yeah, so yeah, burnt yeah. out. Like, even when Joseph put me on a diet plan, I'm like, I did just expand it. <laughs> yeah. so I think what, I mean, I'm so depleted. <laughs> one, one to two days is, is like, yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. Mental is good. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Everyone needs a day off. Everyone yeah. needs, is hard sometimes though, right? When you work for yourself, yeah. it's hard yeah. to get yeah. that you know, you got you got to force some days. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you will, you've really played the long game. You will, you will need it. Yeah. 100%. 100%. For me, July is the closest days we're going to have. Be smart with your time. You know, I, mean, I know everyone wants to you know, work hard, but yeah. work smart as well. Don't yeah. bring yourself out. No. No. Right, take time to smell the roses. Plant them first as well. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to a park actually to play some basketball. Oh, nice. like, I've only got two clients. Please. I'm going to go in between. As well. it's it's today. tear you. For Friday tomorrow. Oh, that's a good. That's a good. No, I shouldn't. You know, I'll warm up. <laughs> Next question. I've got two questions. They're both about the same thing. Okay, go on then. So I go, okay, yeah. all right. Let's do it. Instantly. Oh, right, here we go now. Okay, is UFB going to become 24 hours? Oh, oh it's the same person. I the same one. I bet it's the same person that asked Well, me I put a week. poll on earlier the week whether to turn UFB 24 hours, and outstanding, we had uh, 90% voting yes. Mm-hmm. With only like two people saying no. Uh, and who are the two? Do you want to call them out? Was it Greg? Was it Ricky? <laughs> it wasn't us. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's the, something I've been thinking about. Then I thought the, the just the, the whole process of turning twenty four hours. I had a meeting with guys today, and a lot of people, a lot of gym owners who I spoke to, how how they've turned the gym to that. This is the best thing they've ever done. Um, it's not as hard as you think. It's just you get more time to yourself, and mm-hmm. you sort of implement a system where people can come and train. So you're in a safe environment without having, you know, yeah. any weirdos around. You need to yeah. automate it a little bit more. Automate right? it, yeah. It. Which I had a meeting today, like I said, and um, so obviously got to figure out the access yeah. to mm-hmm. the gym and, you know, all the other bits and bobs. But I think I think it will be the next step. Yeah, your wishes have been heard. Yeah. That's the thing as well. You've make, you're making it a priority that even though you're turning it and changing it into 24 mm-hmm. hours potentially, it's not taking away from the personal experience yeah. of the members right now. Exactly. Just trying to make it safe. Well, I, I, I never want to lose that personal touch because no. that's why people come to gyms like this. Yeah. Um, but for, 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 say, the hours from, say, 10 o'clock or even 9 o'clock at night when it gets yep. quiet till 6 or 7 in the morning yep. gives people that flexibility, that option to come yeah. train when they want. Also weekends, which, which you will benefit massively. Yeah, because yeah, the weekends are always get asked about a lot of people. Mm, do you yeah. want to train on the weekends? Not everyone goes out, no. but a lot of people do want not, to I purposely did that so to give the staff time off, yeah. myself time mm-hmm. off, so we wouldn't burn out. Yeah. But I think if we could automate it, then I think it definitely um, would be a bonus for us. I think it would work. So 24 hours is definitely something I'm considering. Um, and if it does happen in probably the next couple of months, Mm-hmm. So, uh, it takes time to implement everything properly yeah, so because yeah, we don't yeah. want to do it to a point where it's like coming in and it's causing causing no, issues any yeah. issues I mean I've got to think about every little sort of mm-hmm. things like changing the supplements to our vending machines yeah, yeah. Um, it's just lock safety yeah right, safety entry out, yeah. Um, and out of hours if people want to come in a day pass mm-hmm. yeah. yeah but I've, I've figured all this out anyway because I've got lots of friends who own gyms who've yeah. obviously had the same problem so I've, I've got People I can. You got guidance. Yeah, guidance. Yeah. But yes, it looks like it's definitely going to go that way. And I'm again, to it. God forbid, touch wood, things don't work out. It's, you can just change it back. Yeah, well, I think 
we'll do it 24 hours first, yeah, yeah, monitor it. Yeah. And if, mm-hmm. if there's a gaps for, say, between 12 and 4 where no one in or there's yeah. only one person, then we can yeah. always cut it up to 12. Yeah. Yeah. So we we still got, you know... Yeah. But still those extra hours yeah, then can do a lot make a difference. for a couple of people. We'll yeah. have the system implemented. We'll have the access implemented. Yeah. And we'll just cut off the... On a weekly basis, you might not notice it. Yeah. But across the year... Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a difference. I was going to say it's it keeps be, growing yeah. in numbers, mm. and, and we can more, lengthen the hours as we go. More finances that can be reinvested into the gym, as and well. also you got to think about how many new apartments are being built yep. in Birmingham yeah. City Centre. All yeah. around here, just yeah. new apartments, yeah. new buildings. So I think it's definitely um, why not a call for it. Busy people with his careers or they're self-employed as well. Yeah, they want to look after themselves. Anyone hospitality, Lord. anyone yeah. in NHS, yeah. yep. anyone who does long hours, yep. who's not doing nine to five, yeah, will be happy yeah. about that. Yeah. And a lot of people don't want to go to, even though they've, they've, they haven't got all the time mm-hmm. in the world. If they're coming in two, three in the morning, maybe they do want a premium experience and they want to use good equipment and whatnot. Not everyone wants to go to Pure Gym. So. No. But yeah, I think it's a good move if done correctly, which I'm sure. So stay tuned. Uh, you got a question? Yes. Good one. Where is meal prep not socially acceptable? Any stories? Where is meal prep? You mean like if you're on prep and you're taking... Yeah. I've... Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I've been to the time. I used to go to the cinema and um, with my egg whites. No, with my <laughs> eggs. I remember you used to open the eggs in the cinema and he's obviously the smell of boiled eggs. Mm-hmm. I think that's the <laughs> worst smell in the world. I don't think boiled eggs are any worse than we This is before like protein shakes or like yeah, yeah. Shame. <laughs> yeah protein um egg yeah, white, egg, would be happy. Eggs eggs in the cinema. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's one sort of thing. Um probably t- taking to where to a like a wedding. Yeah, well, I was gonna ask that. What's your thoughts on things like Oh, that? I've done it. Okay. I was gonna say the wedding for me it wouldn't be an issue because if yeah. you're so super focused, <laughs> if you're the one getting married, if you're the one getting married, you know what, that's an issue. I, I know if I was to sort of go to a wedding, yeah, mm-hmm. and not have my food, and I'll start picking, I'll, I'll just end up yep. eating and eating, yeah, and I'll end up, yeah, of course. And home. obviously, if you got a couple of weeks to your show, yeah, the last thing you want to do is screw your diet up because yeah. it went to a wedding. Yeah, I was, I was, I was very strict in everything my diet. So if I mm-hmm. bought my Tupperware. I knew, like, if I had six meals, that's that's all I did. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't, I never divert from the plan. Never. Is that so? Maybe around. like cinemas and spaces, like yeah. where people are quiet and just mm-hmm. kind of really focus into one thing. Probably socially unacceptable ish, but just the no, regular. If you're on places, prep, then yes. But if you like yeah. just normal training, then yes. This is all it gets. <laughs> yeah. no, I think that's fine. I think it's fine. Okay. We, no, should we get we controversial to... in here? Yes, please. Potentially controversial. I think the fucking answer is very simple, but... Thoughts on born women competing against ex-men in sport? Born, born women? Yeah. Sorry, women and... Oh, that's sex change. Yes. Yeah. No? No. Men that are competing in women's sports. Because they're on... <laughs> oh, because they've had the... Um, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they've had they the had a, yeah. They, they had Well, they might not have had the... Op, but sure. Well, it's obviously unfair, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's unfair because at the end of the day, males... A man's a man. A <laughs> man is a man. Yeah, a man is a man. They're, they're born different. They're structured different. And the whole anatomy is different from mm-hmm. pelvic bones to the heart size to the lung size, you know. Everything is different. Yeah. So it automatically puts the females into disadvantage. Yeah, higher amounts of testosterone as well, yeah. which sort of yeah. makes them stronger. Even though they might be on testosterone blockers and mm-hmm. estrogen replacement, yeah, but they've already had the yeah, they've had a the fight and they've had of it. Years, thirty years, yeah. so they've exactly. got that advantage. Yep. And men do grow a lot faster. Even like I, I train male and female yeah. clients, and I know is my male clients yeah. do grow a lot yeah. faster. Their results show up a lot yeah. faster. But well, well, one day, if you're a trans, if you're, a, do you think yourself you are a woman or in a man's body? How does it work? So it's like, it's like... Or do they just get bored being a male? Sam is really looking at me. I'm not trans, but Sam is looking at me. So I'm going to ask by what I know. (laughs) Train bikini this year. What is that then? Um, I... Fuck knows, you know. Um, I I don't know. I don't know what... I think it's like body dysmorphia, right? I think some people... That's just going to be controversial. Some people are doing it for attention. Some people are doing it purely because they're lost in themselves and they don't really know. They have misguided or not enough attention growing up from their parents and they've just been misguided and they just don't know who they are. 
And then there's some people who genuinely get the ick of their own body. Yep. Like, and it doesn't have to be specifically to gender, mm-hmm. right? Because body health, body dysmorphia works. I know, I've watched a couple of documentaries mm-hmm. and there's been a person who just doesn't like their arm yep. and it would do every, like it would try to cut his yeah. arm off. Yeah. Like that's how yeah. deep it gets. Mm-hmm. So those I can like, I know you're not asking for validation, but that's valid. You know, because if you can't really control your impulses to a point where you are injuring your body and stuff like that, I get it. But if you simply go like, oh, I feel like um, I feel like a woman today, therefore I'm going to present as well. Yeah. You're delusional. Yeah. Just just put a dress on or something. Yeah. You know, it's just a little bit delusional, yeah. I think. I think from my personal opinion on what people want to do in their day-to-day life is completely fucking irrelevant. Yeah. When it comes to sport and exactly. competing, if you're allowing... Males, I'm not going to say biological male. Mm-hmm. You're allowing men to compete in women's sport. Whether you know you've seen it in the in the records, they is yeah. a common example, right? If you want to look at elite bench sport, press, they'd forget that they looked. They Serena Williams mm. was in was on a talk show, and she got asked by the the host, would "Oh, you play against would, you com- would you like to compete against the men?" Mm. She's like, "Hell no." Her statistics, so the way she performs, she may be the mm-hmm. best in the world. In female, female. Yeah. if she was competing, she was ranked right. like four hundred and sixty yeah, yeah. something. Yeah. She said so she it's a whole be different sport. Competing in any high level of sport? No, no, no. She said it's you like know? a whole different sport. Yeah. She said she would maybe be able to last yeah. like three minutes. Yeah. Mm. And that, like that. that is a non-physical. Yeah, it's a non-contact. It's, it's a non-contact physical. sport where you've got men competing against women in mixed martial arts. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you doing? That's, that's to me, that's crazy. Yeah. And even like, there was obviously an issue with the swimming as well, yeah. right? Yep. The swimming was big because again, yep. the transition person yep. won the races and yep. got a quite a few medals, right? But if you look at the physique of yep. the person, that is a fully developed, yeah. grown yeah. male. Yeah. But you can't be satisfied winning against... No, I, I mean, for me, it's yeah. like you do what you want. I'm not mm. going to hate you on a personal level, on a mm. human level. That's your business, what you do. However, when it comes to sports, it does create issues. It creates disadvantages well, to should females. They, should they invent classes for trans people? I've said this. This no, is a very easy thing. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have to be specific trans no. No. class. It just has no. to be an open category. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> just open category. Whoever wants to apply, but apply. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Because even now, when it's true, okay, you want to compete against everybody? Cool, go compete mm-hmm. against everybody. Because then you have to go to yeah. think, guys, what about when there's people calling us some he, yeah. she, and yeah. they all yeah, at the yeah, same yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So, how are you going to put that yeah. into. Yeah, you have a separate class. <laughs> yeah. That's a no, annoying category. You can have someone who's, okay, you're signing up for a competition, right? It's swimming, tennis, fucking whatever it is, yeah. weightlifting, anything. Right. This class is men, this mm-hmm. class is women's, this class is open, which means. Anyone can compete in that class. Mm-hmm. You want to go compete in that? Okay, go do that. Sweet. Because I don't think Problem it's solved. fair for the Problem solved. people to collect the rewards, right? If no. it puts the females in disadvantage. No. And when it comes to record setting mm-hmm. and things like that, your world record is always either, it's category determined, always, it doesn't matter yeah. what it is, yeah, yeah, always yeah. category yeah, determined. Yeah, yeah. Right? So then you, we have you, you may be the world record holder in the open division mm-hmm. or whatever you want to call it. You know, the fucking, I don't care. Yeah. But that division, crossover division, um, mixed division then there you go that's a yeah. brand new whole thing that's another sport yeah you know it's and the same sport just different division yeah. that's yeah. it and it should be up to the mm-hmm. individual competing and the federation yeah. as well but the individual who signs up for that competition to say okay if this is the way you're identifying you should compete in this class oh, yeah. you're not allowed to compete in this class mm-hmm. because number one have this class specifically for people that or either yeah. what, whatever you identify as whatever you can compete in that class rather than this and that this is for this and this only yeah. I know that some people are going to be like oh but then if they blah 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 should this and this and this tough shit don't compete in high level sport then there you go go, be yeah. as, go do your thing live your life exactly the way you want because to live. it's the same people that you're discrediting you... people that are extremely good at what they do mm-hmm. by inadvertently cheating yeah. at what you do yeah, I was about you to know. say, because if that same person did compete in the men's category, yeah. they wouldn't even place top 50. No. None. So how is that fair? No. So if you can't place top 50 in your actual category, yeah. so to say, yeah. but then you place top one in female category yeah. by far, yeah. to me, that, that doesn't make you good at sports. Yeah. It just makes the rest of the women look less. Exactly. Which they're not because which is they're offensive. Com- which they're not because they're competing. <laughs> you, can't, you can't feel good about beating you know, over sex. Yeah. 
with what's say weak sex with me, you know what I mean? <laughs> from a physical, from from a physical perspective, yeah. perspective. You know, any kind of physical record in sport is it is held yeah. by a man. Yeah. You know, the, the the hundred meters, the sixty meters is always faster. It's always going to be divisions, yeah. and they're there for a reason. I yeah. think. strength related sports. Mm -hmm. The fucking the, the records are held by men. Mm -hmm. You know, anything performance based at the elite level, they're, they're held by men. I've, but I've it's, not my, it's not my that opinion. Way. No, it's just a fact. And it's been like that for years, hundreds of years. Yeah. So our bodies developed in that sort of way. We had what hunter gatherers and yeah. they were men. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> so that, men that were physically that's capable. That's Stone Age. Yeah. <laughs> men that were physically capable of hunting would go do that. Men that were deemed lesser physical men would yeah. go would gather berries, fruits, nuts, whatever. Yeah, yeah, but they but were still doing the bars. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Simon and his granola squares. Mm -hmm. I'm not having for a week. How do you feel? Having withdrawal. I think I need to get one today. Let me clear. All right, next question. Right. <laughs> nice to, uh, the weather's changed, isn't it? Yes. Oh, makes it be nice. different. So much better. I'm so more motivated to work out. It's harder to get through the workout, but it's yeah. a lot better. Is bodybuilding addictive? Why are there so many older guys who compete chasing after a young man's dream? Mm. All right, let me add to that. Bodybuilding addictive. Out. Yes, it is. All right, that's the next, next question. <laughs> <laughs> it's Why? like it's like anything. If you're bodybuilding, when you start seeing results and you, you like what you see, you want to do more, you want to put more into it, you don't want to train more. Your brain releases dopamine, exactly, then, literally after yeah. every single session. So It's, it's like, it's a never-ending journey, because you're always wanting to get better, not just bodybuilding, but everything. In life, you should. Yeah. Yeah. Just I mean, no, I don't... And when you start bodybuilding, you don't like your body getting smaller it's either. Addictive, so. cause you're, cause it, who doesn't want to look good? Yeah. You know what I mean, who of doesn't want to have a great physique? And I think a lot of people, it's very mental health related, mm, of course, yeah. so they kind of correlate it to that. If they're having a bad day, they're going to... Mm come in and they're going to do an extra session yep. maybe or push extra hard so I do think it's a run different. or anything yeah. in regards to like what was the second question why did they why did that why are the older mean? guys com competing chasing after a young man's dream it's not a young man's dream I don't well, think well, you're never too young to take care of your body mm. I don't think you're never too young to or too old to actually you know when you're like in my use it's just a different stage yeah you're not I'm not I don't care if like if someone's competing, they're going for like Mr. Olympia. I don't care about that. I've done no. my time competing. Mm -hmm. Now my next is to sort of stay in shape yep. and try and live a healthy, functional sure. life. You know what I mean? I don't care about being on stage anymore. Cause no, I don't like shit. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't like shit. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever will because no. I, I take care of my body. Yeah. You know, owning a gym, you gotta, I think you got to have some sort yeah. of you have pride in your body. Yeah. If, if, if you were at the age you're at now, still going, trying to compete for a protocol or something, what's your thoughts on that? If if I was still progressing and I yeah. saw uh, seeing results yeah. and getting better, then mm -hmm. I would. But um, I would. But if if sort of if, you, if you're sort of chasing something and you're not getting chasing better and your body's sort of deteriorating, you got you know atrophy or whatever. Because a lot a lot of guys in their forties, fifties, they start losing their leg size. Yeah, and you know, they're always chasing and chasing. But then you know, it's time to call it a day yeah. or compete mm -hmm. in a in a, a Euro. Master's class. Obviously, well, because yes, there is a class for 45 plus, right? Yeah, there is. 35 plus. Yeah, yeah. there is. I mean, obviously, there are some sort of nominees like Neil Campbell. He's probably yeah. near my age. And he got a pro card like two years ago. What about Brian? He's... Brian's 45. Yeah, but he got a pro card when he... He started competing when he was 10, 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he started yeah. late. Started yeah. Late. And I feel, like, yeah. I feel like a lot of people actually start late with bodybuilding because a lot of the time we have this fake perception of what it actually is at the start so we don't well, they start, start they start late and early. Yeah. No. Yeah. But Brian's, uh, don't forget, he's like classic Mr. Olympia so he's, yeah. he's got very good genetics. He's reached the peak of the sport. Yeah. yeah. I think this is more, you know, coming from the opinion, like the direction of if you've not achieved that success that you wanted 10, 15 years ago, yeah. you got, why are you still pursuing it? Yeah. I suppose it never sort of leaves you, does it? No. What's that? Yeah. Well, with me, I'll just channel into something else that's yeah. more, that I'm going to benefit more from yeah. rather than just standing on stage because I know it's mm -hmm. not going to do me any No, no. Papers. But to me, if it makes you happy, if you genuinely yeah. choose yeah. that, yeah. if you're still seeing the progress, like yeah. Simon said, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. You stop being Yeah, I do think that as well. I think if, you, if you're not putting, which of course there's a risk to everything, mm -hmm. but if you're not having to abuse your body, yeah, exactly. be where you are. It's not taking away, say you get, you you're pushing on in years from a bodybuilder standpoint. You've got a family. It's not taking too much time away mm -hmm. from that. Your priorities, it's not yourself. 
um, and you're still able to fulfill your duties as a you know as a part, as a parent, as yeah. a husband, as a wife, whatever it may be. I don't see what the issue is, but mm-hmm. I think if you got the blinders on and you go in and you don't give a shit about anyone yeah. else, that's where the issue comes yeah. from. That's not bodybuilding doing that to you. That's your that's decision. Yeah, yeah, the that's bodybuilding. It can't do that. Does that, yeah. does that if you yeah. know if you're sort of very focused and you want to do yeah. well, you know you, you do everything you takes. And, yeah, and I, you know I've done the past where I shut everything out. Yeah, and then just to get to that goal. Yeah. Well, that's why I, don't, I wouldn't want to do it again. Yeah. Because I, I enjoy life outside yeah. bodybuilding. I'm not saying I can't go and use my camera outside bodybuilding, yeah. but it's, yeah. it's sort of, it's, uh, I know what it takes to get. And to get to the top. Yeah, I wouldn't want yeah. to sort of go back there. Yes. No. You've got all this to come. Oh, yeah. I, I will have my run. I've got a couple of years on me. <laughs> yeah, with women, they have to die as extreme as men. No, and you've got to be... on the class. Yeah, because yeah. if I'm going for bikini, which is probably something, bikini, entering bikinis is something I'm going to really focus on. I'm not going to get much bigger. I think I can push quite far with yeah. it without giving up too much. Yeah. Because bikini category, again, I don't have to be so big and so... Yeah. Have to maintain myself as much, it's not right? too excessive. It's not too excessive, yeah. no. The hardest part is building the, mus- the muscle initially. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Takes years, takes mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Especially without the use of mm, steroids or as a woman. Yeah, yeah. Because you're a woman know, without yeah. steroids as well. Yeah. Um, our hormones fluctuate, our moods get affected. Like I had a stressful week last week. Yeah. And uh, you guys know, and obviously that affected my diet a yeah. little bit. It showed on the yeah. on the feedback sheet, it showed in your check-in. And happens. that time of the month's passed. Yeah. Water pulled itself off. We yeah. didn't no, no prep ever goes. No, no of course no, not. Of course no, no. Not. And it's my first one, so of course, going to go it's again, again, doing, again and get there. Doing the best with the scenario and the mm-hmm. situation that you have. Yeah. It's like watching um, Phil Lee's documentary, Breaking yeah. Olympia, which we have got the poster for in here. Stolen. Um, it's basically like an insight of how <laughs> all the obstacles he faced. Mm-hmm. Going, I mean, if you think Mr. Olympia, that, you know, he's invincible. Yep. And now he's, you know, he's, doesn't have any problems, but he had a, he faced a lot of issues, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. For the last, I think it was the last Olympia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. His stomach, um, just a lot of mental problems. Yeah. There's uh, always going to be yeah. a learning. You sort of appreciate, you know, he's a human being after all. Mm-hmm. And he's, you know, <clears throat> he has problems just like anyone else. Yeah. Same as for me, like the way I could have tackled last week, I could have just get it done or whatever, but yeah. I wanted to help people out. Yeah. And there's other focus areas where I had to put my focus in. And at the end of the day, family always comes yeah. first. Things like that always yeah. come first and I always focus on those people yeah. anything else. So that's the thing when you, when you talk about Phil Heath and obviously, we know as humans we're not invincible. Mm-hmm. When you're on a good run, you don't mm-hmm. think about the no. negative side of things. But you know, when you tore, tore your pet, mm. how did you deal with that? I was, you know what? It's funny you should say that because I was thinking about it the other day because I was in, I was driving in Litchfield where I was from. And um, I knew I tore it straight away and I was I was absolutely devastated. So I went to the hospital and... Um, what year was this? This was 1999. So before like a show or something? In March. No, it wasn't before a show. It's basically... Um, Bit of a stupid story, actually, but tell us story time. Story time. So the gym I had in Litchfield had a had a leak in the roof. Surprise, surprise! <laughs> so I <laughs> it was a one-story building. So I I went on the roof to, to fix this leak. Yeah, me and my mate, and um, and it was the last piece. I was sort of filling these uh, holes in the roof, and the roof collapsed, and I fell through the gym, and uh, landed on my back like sixteen foot. And people were like, with, like doing training in the gym, and I, I missed the tricep push down by like that much. If I would have hit it, I would have been dead. So um, I landed oh, my back, oh my smashed God. my back. But the ambulance had to sort of come in, wheel me out in a wheelchair. My mum came in and like just give me a smack in the head. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I'd, I think I'd like ten weeks off training because I oh my smashed God. my back in. And um, so it was the first day coming back into the gym after that accident. Sort of tore my pec, just went straight in without. I was warmed up, but I just went, my body, obviously, it's, it was yeah. just training. And I was eager to get back and um, just fucking popped. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, there's a guy at our gym right now. He has, like, torn up inner thigh, like, yeah. tore the muscle yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. The whole leg is black. Right there. Yeah. 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 Oh, my God. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. Um, what was the question? How did you deal with it? How did I deal with it? Yeah. Uh, I was, I, because I, I was, I, back then, I was, I think I was 23, 24. I was really, thought I was going to become a pro bodybuilder. Yeah. I really was, I was, I was on that mission yeah. and I'd already won the British Championships a couple of years before so I knew and I was I was in all the magazines I'd won every show and I was sort of hyped up mm-hmm. and I thought you know what um, within three years I'll, I'll be a IPB pro and yeah. back then when IPB pro meant something 
But when I told that, I, I knew it was pissing all over a dream. That was my, that was, that was my dream. <laughs> that was my dream. Yeah. Over. Yeah. And um, so I went to the doctor and they said, we're fixing. So uh, yeah. I was just on a deep depression for like, one well, years. Mm -hmm. And then my dream was like, that's all I wanted to be was yeah. looking at IFPB. So problems. it just seemed like it was just crushed yeah. Yeah. at that point. Mm. What, you get it reattached. We got it reattached later on because I, the first surgeon they said it wasn't worth doing. But after a while, so I was still competing. After I thought, you know, mm -hmm. but it was, it was. I wasn't winning. I wasn't winning anything because mm -hmm. you could see the uh, the injury. I thought I'm going to get a second opinion, and I went. Yeah. I went for a second opinion, and they they reattached it. Uh, it's still not perfect, but it was a lot better. It was probably about sixty percent better. Mm -hmm. So I thought I could I could sort of live with that, and I uh, started competing again. I started winning again. I would like to get redone again mm -hmm. by, I don't know, probably get a third opinion. Yeah. Would you have to take some time off if you get yeah, it redone? Yeah. How long? Um, about six weeks. Okay. Not that long. About six weeks. Okay. Okay. So do you think becoming a bodybuilder was professional, going to the elite stage, was harder back then, like in the 90s, 80s, or is it harder now? What do you think? I'm going to say it was harder because there was less opportunities, less chances. But yeah. Yeah, UK was only one pro bodybuilder mm -hmm. chase yeah. you had to win one person a year so you had to one win. person a year you had to win that's a lot harder every year I used to compete Leamington Spa to qualify for the mm -hmm. British so you'd have to place top two yeah. if you're really good and it was close top three they'd give uh -huh. but nine times out they'd only give the winner so you'd have to win your class the local qualifier then go to the British Championships where you would be in your mm -hmm. class with 10-15 other guys yeah. they're all winners they're all winners from previous um, area classes yeah uh, regional qualifiers, mm -hmm. then you win your class at the British, then you go amongst all the class winners for the overall title. So, and you, mm -hmm. so there's five classes, four or five classes. So um, <clears throat> the winner of that gets the pro card. So it's like um, a step by step. Yeah. Now you can just... It's, yeah, a lot, it's, it's like a, you have to do regionals, place can, top two, yeah. and then you qualify as a pro in the it, next show if you place It depends. Two. So I don't really know much about it to make sense. Now yeah. you compete at a regional, you can come dead last. Mm -hmm. You've competed at your regional. You've got your qualification to compete at a pro qualifier. You don't have to win. You don't have to win. I thought you have to place no, no, top no, no, two. No, no, no. A what, regional qualifier. I, I think. It? I think that's just a money making scheme. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how how can you like come last year? Then yeah, it's just to make money out of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We never had that before. Yeah. You got to think the people that do that are just to make money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, you have to compete at a regional qualifier, then you can go on to do a um, national level show, yeah. which is a pro qualifier for the yeah. most part. Um, and yeah, and you, you win that, you win your class, you can you're eligible to win the pro mm -hmm. depending on the show. Mm -hmm. well, look at how, how, how many pro qualifiers are there a year? To be yeah, honest, uh, yeah, there's a lot. There's so many people right now. There's an so IBB pro in there. Handles and Instagram. If I did win my that British mm -hmm. Championships, yeah, nineteen ninety six. I'd have to wait a full year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, because I think the rate. sport has expanded so so oh, much. Yeah, they do yeah. so many, many more shows, so a lot more people can. I, get I, think it's better, I think it's better in one way, but it's obviously it diluted the um the quality. I think no, it has diluted the quality. I think a lot a lot more people feel like they can just compete. Mm, like yeah. I've seen some shows, like for novices, even if you're a novice, I think you should have standards. Of course. And sometimes there's no standards when they step on the stage. You can only judge what's there. Everyone, all right, fuck it, why not? Why not? Everyone, I mean, converse with a lot of people in the industry around my set, the same age as me, or mm -hmm. you know, they're social figures. Say the standard. Of a particular federation in the UK mm -hmm. this year has been shit. Oh like, yeah, uh, from I've, a condition I've, perspective, I've seen the novice yeah. shows. Oh my god, for the woman, for it's their just, wellness, has been terrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's that's me coming from unbi I've got no reason to be biased, right? It's just I say I'm looking at what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. I'm commenting on it. The standard has not been comparable to years previous. No, and I know more people are competing. Um, but yeah and I've not been into bodybuilding like that for that long yeah. I've seen a difference because I told you guys I watched yeah. the shows for 90s and 80s yeah. and so on and like mid 2000s were good, great shows yeah. to be honest yeah. for women bikinis especially yeah. but then when it came to recent especially this year I've seen some IVB shows and stuff like that <laughs> and the girls that I lined up again some of their conditions are just not there yeah. so I, I don't know who to put the blame on the coaches or them you know I spoke <laughs> I about this realistic um, podcast with Rich Gaspari a few, few weeks ago and I said do you think he would be able to compete 
nowadays, obviously social media, mm-hmm. as opposed to back in the 80s or 90s when he competed. And um, it's good. he said that when I he said now when you go to the gym, you have to set up your tripod, you have to have a videographer, mm-hmm. you have to have the correct lighting yeah. angles. He said when he trained there, he was just training, like yeah. that's all he had mm-hmm. to think about. And he said it, it's just be, be, be too distracted now and lose that focus. Mm-hmm. You know, you can think we're training five days, six days a week. You've got to have that focus. And if you're there, more, becoming more of an influencer, then yeah. it's taken away from your training. Yeah. yeah. Well, before the camera is so big, the phones weren't as portable. So you got to think that easy, easy way of filming and kind of recording your mm. progress just wasn't there. Yeah. It does, so it does, you could focus. It take away from your... Training. I think so too. Like I started using my tripod a lot less, mm. especially when there's certain mm. focus areas. A lot less actually. I might film like one or two things and I just put it down nowadays I don't really want to focus for the next 10 weeks that's all that's how yeah I think though going back to the question which it was the best will always be the best mm-hmm. however the pool may not be as good pool's a lot bigger now isn't it pool's bigger mm-hmm. but I still think the, the people that deserve to yeah. win mm-hmm. are winning maybe at some shows the winner would not be comparable to the winner of another show but the best person still wins mm-hmm. Yeah. The best people will be competing at the highest level. The best mm-hmm. people will still win the pro shows. It's just, best. I think, the entry shows, right? Yeah. They're, they're the ones that lack in standards right I now. think so. And I think because there's a lot of so many online coaches, so many just PTs and stuff like that, they want to get people on stage, yeah. but they don't... It's they, yeah, it's good for business, but they don't really care about the actual condition. Yeah. It's like, okay, I made someone to come to the show. They look there, they bought the bikini, they signed up. Now they look good. Therefore, I'm now... a athlete trainer which is not the case yeah. you know if you're not getting results if your clients aren't getting results then are you really a good online coach can you really coach them through the yeah. competitions yeah, it, it, it takes time doesn't it to sort of get that experience of course good coach of course especially like competing wise for competing that's a whole different yeah. prep thing you know that, that, that last few weeks a lot can happen and yeah. yeah even like the last couple of days are essential I think yeah so I mean sure. we're both under the same impression as well mm-hmm. that and we know this. It's going to be a challenge. Yeah. Especially that last, it's like Sarah says, two weeks, yeah. 14 days, last seven days. Mm-hmm. You know, the show's not at the Birmingham Town Hall. Nope. The show's in fucking Madrid. Yeah. <laughs> so. 42 degrees summertime. <laughs> <laughs> flying out there. Audio hour. Dude. So we've got more stress to deal with. Mm-hmm. But we rise to the challenge, do the business. We've decided to do yeah, I think show. I think stress is the biggest. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you, know, you know what? You, a lot of the time you start I think social media is a bastard for this because yeah. mm. you start watching other other people in your yeah. class or whoever's competing then, mm. it, then it plays tricks and you think oh it looks better than me then yep. mm-hmm. I'm not there and maybe I should pull out I remember when I was competing it was 2009 mm. and um, there was a body called Sean Tavernier mm-hmm. um, he, he won the first time as the year before he just walked in and won it outright because he was a freak and Next year, he was competing the light heavyweight, which was mine and Dean's class. Mm. And um, the guy that was sort of helping me in my training at the time, he was sending these pictures to Sean. And I thought, how am I supposed to compete with that? So I was yeah. like, he was like, he's Mr. Olympia level. He, he could be like a 212 Mr. He did compete at the Olympia, right? Yeah, he got fifth. And, um, and it's done that he beats Kamal, who yeah. came okay, two times in Mr. Yeah. Olympia. Like, it, it does sort of psych you out, thinking, yeah. oh, maybe it's just, I mean, I think, but it's hard to say off social media. Yeah, it's so hard, yeah. and I think like it's almost like essential. I feel like it's almost essential for me to stay on social media and yeah, who's yeah, up yeah. there, right? Because again, like I am comparing my condition to the other. It's a double edged sword. Yeah, it, is. it just depends on how you deal with it. Mm-hmm. I think so. So it's got to oh. keep that keep focus. Just keep your head. The focus. Keep yeah. Your head this kind of one. I think like the next ten weeks will be like when it really starts for me. So oh. get the condition in. We'll get it. Final question. Let's go. Should I take gear for my first competition? Yeah, 500 mils of everything. Go ahead. Enjoy. 100 mils, 500 milligrams, just mils. <laughs> Fucking man. I'm joking. That's the thing. You've got to learn the difference between milli- yeah, uh, milliliter. Yeah. So I don't make a mistake. I'm yeah, joking. yes. A little, a little um, lesson. Come on, science. Uh, science. Uh, science. science. Yeah. Mil is the actual volume of mm-hmm. liquid. So you could have 10 mil and you can ask that's 100 milligram. 100 milligram is the concentration mm-hmm. that's within the whole of the compound. In the compound, yeah. yeah. So you could have seen that. Say, oh, I'm doing, I'm doing one mil of, you know, one mil of test, yeah. 
One mil could be 50 milligram, one mil could be 500 milligram. Mm -hmm. The one mil doesn't mean It's just shit. concentration, right? It's just the concentration. Okay. And we said, oh, I'm doing two, two mil of this, two mil of that. I said, well, it could be 200 milligram, it could be 1,000, 2,000 milligram. Do you know? So then, uh, no. No. A lot of people, they come to me, I'm just doing two mil of this, two yeah. mil of that. I said, well, two mil of what? Mm -hmm. thing. So you got to learn, mil is the volume, how much yeah. you put into the needle, the yeah. syringe. A milligram is the concentration or the strength and it's normally 250 milligram per mil. So with mm -hmm. one mil, there's 250, 300, whatever, that one mil. So you've got two mil, so something that's sussed them on, it's 250 milligram per mil, two mil is 500 milligram. So bear that in mind, just don't just stick anything to your ass. You know, very easy way of visualizing it as well, mm -hmm. if you've never been exposed to it before, is imagine you've got some squash or mm -hmm. pot. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, water. I was literally comparing the squash. You've got 500 mils of water, or 100 mils of water in a water bowl, mm -hmm. How much squash is going into that? It's the concentration of the squash per milliliter of water. Mm -hmm. So what's the ratio? Your, your squash is your compound. Yeah. How much you're putting in? So density, the amount yeah. of of compound within. So well, the more the liquid. more liquid is more, more diluted. Yes, yeah. but it's yeah. still yeah. essentially yeah. the same. Same amount. Yeah, yeah same amount. Yeah. So would you recommend it to someone to take steroids then for the first time? I'm sure. I, I'm, I'm going to hate this, but it all depends. <laughs> um, <if, laughs> oh. <laughs> Personally, no, because I think uh, you, you, you can train very good. You could get a good mm -hmm. level completely naturally anyway. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people are rushing to it. I think you, you're not training for, say, three to five years naturally. You, sh you shouldn't be thinking about competing. I, I agree. I th I, th I think if you're stepping on stage for the first time, it's just not necessary. Mm -hmm. Because if you do get good results without taking steroids, mm -hmm. then try to keep that up yep. for as long as possible before you and decide think, to take And I think it can make people lazy. They think, oh, I'm on a cycle. Yeah. I don't have to do this. I don't have to you know, die as far away. So you can take steroids and still look shit. So. Well, you see it with people when they take gear and when they come off gear, tend not to be as on their business mm -hmm. as they were when they were on. So they're like, oh, yes, I've come off and I've lost 10 pounds. It will realistically, you probably lost five pounds of water and five pounds of good tissue because you've not been eating enough of your, your meals haven't been correct. You've not been doing cardio, you've not been training correctly because mentally you're equating progress to take steroids, yeah. which is the wrong relationship you should have. Whereas they are an amplifier for the work you're already putting you in. You still need to work if yeah. you... I mean, when, you when you are on steroids, you can see gains quite notably. Of course. I think especially those first think six weeks. They just inject themselves. It's just yeah. going to grow. Well, yeah. they be localized. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's what I used to think if I'm honest. Why is my ass? I mean, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, but a lot of people Some people, that's that. their impression, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so people, there's two places where you normally inject. It's where I normally, it's either the shoulder or the top of the glutes. Yep. And um, top of the glutes, just because there's less nerves there mm -hmm. and there's a lot more fat there especially in my case, <laughs> less pain there. Shoulders, so if you run out of places to inject, people think, you fucking druggy. <laughs> I've been, been honest, you know, you, you, you sort of alternate it. So one day be, don't forget the last, say six weeks before a competition, you're injecting yourself every other day with fast acting compounds. And why would you change your injection site? Just because it could be painful. So if you inject it, say the Tuesday, you got to inject it again on Thursday. Yeah, you're still going to have that compound. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it probably hasn't dissipated yet, no, and you yeah. can't get and build up of scar tissue. tissue. Yeah, which yeah. I mean, to. which when you're on stage and you're stage lean, it can be noticed. Yeah. Yeah. So I would, I would um, alternate injection points. Yeah. I remember uh, injecting to my lap once because I sort of run out of place to inject, oh and uh, <clears throat> certain Mister Olympia told me to do this. Who had a big back? Oh. I didn't mention any names. <laughs> so, was he English? <laughs> yeah, from Birmingham. <laughs> Work, work that out <laughs> and I, I inject into my lap and for, for about a week I could not sleep because the pain was incredible it just does it actually really really hurt what does it feel you know, like when you inject a new muscle yeah yeah, it's the most excruciating pain ever and I remember two weeks I think it was three weeks before I won my show I injected someone told me to inject in my legs so I did that and I couldn't do my cardio for like a week oh my I couldn't fucking walk I didn't again I didn't know it hurts mm. that bad I had like vitamin C but injections, you but... You do it in your shoulder, you don't really feel it. You do mm -hmm. it in your glutes, you don't really feel it. Does it then if you run out... When it, when it comes to the pain, obviously, does it matter if you're using a water-based or oil-based compound? Um, in your experience? Well, there's only sort of one water-based, uh, what's the way they take, which is called Winstrol. Um, 
I would imagine oral sting, just stings when you inject it. You're very you you're much more exposed um open to infection if it's water based, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But then no one really takes menstrual anymore yeah. oral injection because um the company that made it, they they stopped making it because before we were right. I used to go to Spain and I'd be, if you could buy it over the counter there and I'd just hypothetically. go partying and bring it back. Hypothetically. Hypothetically. Yeah, but you can't do that anymore. Yeah, this podcast, we're not giving out advice. It's just our opinion. It's now. just conversation between three people that are completely um, uneducated on every topic. But yeah, it does, it does hurt. But um, certain places hurt more than others. But uh, if it's a fresh muscle and you never injected that place before, mm -hmm. then be prepared for... Have, have you ever pinned your calves? <laughs> no. Never needed to. <laughs> biceps I had to look down <laughs> biceps triceps shoulders glutes quad once a lap once um, and that was the most painful back in the days there used to be something called esaclin which is like um, something you inject into your, your weak body part mm -hmm. a couple of days before to, to make it look bigger but it was only temporary it was like a temporary swelling and I remember I um, pumped into like my biceps one year and I, I did like that from the bicep the bicep looked absolutely like did you lose the detail or not? A little bit, little yeah. Bit. But they're not free kills. I was doing that. Yeah. On stage, so I look what I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's quite obvious when people use synthol and stuff like yeah. that. So mm -hmm. I don't think people use it as much now. Do they? I don't think people use synthol. They use water-based enhancements. It's, yeah. I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. But they dissipate. If, they, if it's water-based, they tend to dissipate very yeah. fast. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a build-up yeah. of exogenous substance mm -hmm. in the muscle, especially in the muscle belly. Because mm -hmm. if you've got something... That's a foreign substance in there. Mm -hmm. Your own body will attack that substance, start to break it down, yeah. potentially break down healthy muscle tissue alongside that, which is not which good because this is body, this is that you want. body building, not body destroying. Mm -hmm. so. um, I think that's it. I would say uh, it's that um, it's that time, it's that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So um, thanks for the questions. Don't forget, leave us some questions, comments. Keep up the questions. Good the to topics you'd like us to talk about. Yeah. Any guests? That would like to come on. Yeah, we would love to have, yeah, I guess, yeah. actually. Three of us not had one, right? Mm -hmm. so. No, we haven't. We've not actually. We've got the extra mic there, so mm -hmm. uh, we need to put it in good use. Yep. Okay, so don't forget the 24-hour gym will be coming soon. Next door to Ultima Fitness. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say here. Don't disturb us the first time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for watching. Don't Sweet. Forget, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next video. Peace. Okay.